Before we get started, if you're enjoying this content, you can do us a favor by subscribing to our YouTube channel and ringing the bell. That'll let the algorithm know that you like this content and it will help us produce more. With e-commerce, the nature of online technology is it's always changing and you kind of have to keep up. Welcome to Honest E-Commerce, a podcast dedicated to cutting through the BS and finding actionable advice for online store owners. I'm your host, Chase Clymer, and I believe running a direct-to-consumer brand does not have to be complicated or a guessing game. On this podcast, we interview founders and experts who are putting in the work and creating real results. I also share my own insights from running our top Shopify consultancy, Electric Eye. We cut the fluff in favor of facts to help you grow your e-commerce business. Let's get on with the show. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Honest E-Commerce. I'm your host, Chase Clymer. And today, we're welcoming to the show Lindsay Wilson, the founder and CEO of Al Venice, a certified health coach and new mom. Welcome to the show, Lindsay. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Uh, it's going to be a great conversation. We've been trying to do this for quite some time. Uh, so I know when this was originally scheduled about a year ago, you were a new mom. So I'm assuming, <laughs> I'm assuming that probably struck you a little off, didn't it? Yeah, I'm actually about to have my second baby. Oh, well, congratulations on that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Other than uh, the new children, uh, let, let's dive in a little bit about Al Venice. This is the company that you have uh, been working on here. What are the types of products that you guys are bringing to market over there? We are most well known for our bone broth elixirs and our gut reset program. And then we also have a line of supplements, skincare, and home goods. Absolutely. So where did kind of the idea to get into you know, build a company, you know, founded around kind of the, all these health supplements and broth come from? Um, it really started with the broth. I was struggling with my own digestive issues and I couldn't find any broth on the market that did not have garlic and onions. And I was eliminating those from my diet um, at the time. So I started making my own. I also didn't love the taste of bone broth. So I started layering in a lot of herbs, vegetables, roots, and created what is now known as our bone broth elixirs and they sip more like a tea than your regular broth. Absolutely. And uh, about what time, uh, what year was it when you were experimenting with these uh, almost mostly just for your personal needs? Yeah. Initially, it was just for my personal needs and that started um, in 2015. Absolutely. And then when did you kind of get the idea to maybe maybe there's a market here, maybe I could start to produce products around this? Well, I had a friend who had a friend who was struggling with digestive issues as well. And he was seeing a colon doctor and they recommended that he drink bone broth. So she asked me to make some for him and um, told me he would pay me. So I made a big batch and I put up a uh, post on Facebook just letting people know I had some extra jars and I got like a hundred orders in a couple of days after this Facebook post. So at that point I went and bought a couple of big stock pots and just got, got started. And then the hustle was born. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty much grown organically since. When did uh, it kind of, you realize that, you know, this is going to become a full-time job for me? It pretty quickly became a full-time job for me. Um, I was private chefing at the time. So I really like supplemented my income with the freelance work that I was doing and then worked on the business pretty much full-time from the start. Absolutely. And now were you... When you first launched the business, was it mostly... Uh, obviously, word of mouth, the Facebook helped you get off the ground there. Did When did you kind of... Uh, shift into some more traditional direct consumer models and like build out the website and, and that whole part of the business? That's really where I had an advantage because I had been doing freelance work with graphic design, web design, photography, uh, all of that stuff. So I think I put up the post in maybe like November, December of 2015. And by February of 2016, I launched the website. So there was a couple months that I relied like solely on Facebook posts for sales. And uh, then, then after a couple months, I, I got the website. Now, I know that there's a lot of entrepreneurs out there. And I would say the world these days versus you know, seven years ago when you were launching this on Facebook is a completely different kind of entity then versus now. When you were posting on Facebook, I'm sure this was a lot of organic reach, a lot of friends and family. Was there any kind of 
tactic or growth strategy that you were doing to kind of start looking beyond that initial client of group of clientele for the first initial kind of uh, larger batches as you were building the business? Sure. Um, first, it was all organic. I was mostly posting in women's Facebook groups that were local to LA. So uh, my consumer base was mostly uh, like 25 to 55 year old women in LA that were interested in health um, on various women's groups. So after that, um, when it went online, it, that was really just like an easier way to facilitate orders, but it was still that same demographic. And I moved into retail and doing wholesale pretty quickly. Like once I got going enough to have like enough customers where I had some income coming in consistently, then I started taking the product to stores. Um, within a year of starting, I was in retail locations. So that happened pretty quickly. And um, the, the first way we really started doing any other marketing really besides word, word of mouth or having the product out there on shelves was um, we did influencer partnerships on social media. So we gifted free product to local influencers. Again, we worked with mostly local LA women um, and gave them our products to try and they posted about us. And that really is what got us started online picking up sales. You're not the first to be on the podcast that's mentioned that you found kind of like a your customer demographic, you know, what that avatar was, and then you found places online that they already existed to kind of get the word out around around your product. And I wanted to highlight that part of your story just for all of our other listeners. Like that is a great piece of advice to kind of pick up on if you're if you're struggling with getting those initial sales is find out where your customers already are and what what commonalities that they have. And it's a fantastic jumping off point to get new customers and feedback about your product. Yeah, definitely. I mean, our customers in the beginning were super important to how our product developed and the different flavors and the packaging and all of that because we were in stores demoing products, giving out samples and gauging customer reactions and started doing farmer's market, same thing. Um, so the first couple years was really like getting in stores was just a way for us to connect with our customer and learn what they wanted and what they liked about the product. Now, looking back on kind of that journey, uh, is there any sort of uh, experience, or maybe maybe you think you like, consider it as a, th- a mistake or a learning curve? You know, something that you can point out to our listeners of like, you know, what I made this mistake for you, and let let you learn from that. You know, I don't know if I like made any mistake. Again, every mistake is a learning opportunity, um, and mistakes are just bound to happen and will happen at every stage, and as long as you take those experiences and grow from them and use them as learning opportunities. then I wouldn't say that they're really mistakes because they get you to where you are. But I will say the way that I got started in the beginning was pretty much just like jumping headfirst in and going for it with no idea what I was doing. I didn't have any background in working in a commercial kitchen or really what lawn, what a CPG company even was. I didn't even know what CPG meant when I was starting a CPG brand. So there was tons of things that I learned along the way about certifications I needed and labeling requirements and food safety and sanitation. Like I, there doesn't even skim the surface of what I've learned in the last six years about the wellness industry, the food industry, launching a CPG brand. So I, again, like, as you mentioned, the landscape has really changed with online and how you're able to reach new customers on Facebook or social media, like we were six, seven years ago. So um, I think if I were to do it again, now I would do it a lot differently and I would do more research talk to people that had done this before, before maybe diving in head first, having a budget, having a business plan. (laughs) I didn't start out with any of those basic foundational things that I think now it would be very difficult to, to grow the way we did in the current um, landscape today. Hey there, merchant. 
Are you tired of trying to navigate the wild world of e-commerce on your own? Are you looking for a partner to help you achieve your goals? Look no further than the Shopify Plus agency, Electric Eye. Our team has a proven track record of helping our clients make millions with strategic design and development. Whether you're migrating from a legacy platform to Shopify, designing a new theme for your store, or just looking to optimize what you already have, Electric Eye is the perfect partner for you. Electric Eye are true Shopify experts. Not only is our Shopify knowledge unparalleled, but we have partnerships with all the best tech in the Shopify ecosystem. And don't worry, we're easy to get a hold of. Our clients rave about our fast communication. So here's the deal. If you're an e-commerce business doing over $1 million a year, you can receive a complimentary Shopify diagnostic from our team of experts. That's free, personalized strategic recommendations to improve your store and grow your business. To get started, head on over to electriceye.io slash connect to schedule an intro call with one of our experts. That's electriceye.io slash connect. Struggling to get your Merchant Center ads approved but keep running into a price mismatching error? Wondering how your competitors are showing reviews, price, delivery, and product availability directly in search results? What if there's a way to get more traffic without fighting for rankings? Well, that's where Jason LD for SEO comes in. It's an app that gets you more organic traffic to your Shopify store, qualifying you for over a dozen search enhancements and provides all of the structured data you need for Emergent Center. Jason LD for SEO automatically adds the structured data needed and it's updated regularly as the rules change by Google. It's a hands-off SEO app that you don't need to monkey around with to get working. It's the safest, easiest, and most effective way to stand out from your competitors in search results. Contact us to get your free structured data audit for your store. Find Jason LD for SEO in the Shopify app store to get started. That's J-S-O-N-L-D for SEO. Or go to J-S-O-N-L-D dot app. It's the beginning of a new year. And with the new year comes new opportunities. The often misunderstood Q5 period stretches from Christmas Day to Chinese New Year and gives brands the gifts of significantly lower CPMs. But how can you use this Q5 as a springboard to make 2023 your best year yet? The answer is funding. Funding opens doors for your business. A cash injection now will enable you to take full advantage of the Q5 opportunity by investing more into your marketing and securing that spring-summer collection from your manufacturers. Revenue-based finance from Wayflyer is fairer, faster, and more flexible than the traditional funding options out there. You can get approved for funding in hours and cash in your account within days. There are no interest rates or personal guarantees, just one simple fee. Best of all, repayments are made as a percentage of your revenue. So if you're having a slower month than usual, no problem. You'll just give them less. To learn more about how funding from Wayflyer can unlock growth for your business and turn 2023 into a record year, visit wayflyer.com slash ecom slash honest. That's wayflyer.com slash ecom with two M's slash honest. Wayflyer, funding a better way. Well, let's kind of fast forward a bit in the story. And now I'm assuming, and you kind of alluded to it, things are a little bit different now than they were uh, when you were first getting started. Um, you know, is there anything that you can share along how you're still kind of uh, reaching out and acquiring new customers or keeping your current customers engaged? Yeah. So since the landscape has changed and it's a lot harder to reach people organically, um, we're also not out there in person like we were. In the beginning, we're not at stores sampling. I mean, COVID completely changed the way we've been able to act with our or interact with our customers on a person capacity. We have moved to to doing a lot of paid online marketing, and that just within the the last three years is when we really started doing more with paid advertising on Instagram, on Facebook, on Google. Google's been more recent for us. Um, in the beginning, we relied a lot on retargeting existing customers using those channels. Now it's a lot harder for us to reach our recurring customers. So we we do a lot more with our cold audiences and reaching out to cold audiences. We still do a lot of influencer partnerships and brand partnerships. Um, but there's a lot less unpaid opportunities, a lot more. Um, we're doing a lot more paid partnerships, um, which is tricky because for us, the way that we got started was really working with people that authentically loved our brand and wanted to talk about it. And we still do that, but it's a lot 
more difficult to navigate that and ensure that you're only working with people that really love your brand when there's so many opportunities and and just like so many different paid opportunities it's for us we really try to like give people our product and have them try it and make sure they like it before we will engage in a paid partnership but not every person that we come across will do that so i don't know it's just i think with e-commerce the nature of online technology is it's always changing and you kind of have to keep up like algorithms are always changing and next year we probably will have a totally different strategy than we have in place right now you're just always having to try new things do new things and really like just staying in touch with like who your customer is what your product is what your values are is important as you continue to navigate and test and try new try new methods Absolutely. We talked so much about this amazing broth that you have, have brought to market. Now, if I want to check it out, where do I go? Our broth is available online at owlvenice.com. And then if you're in California, we also sell at over 50 retailers in California, such as Air One, Mother's Market, Lazy Acres, Jimbo's. Just to name a few. Awesome. Lindsay, thank you so much for coming on the show today. Yeah. Thank you for having me. We can't thank our guests enough for coming on the show and sharing their knowledge and journey with us. We've got a lot to think about and potentially add into our own businesses. You can find all the links in the show notes. You can subscribe to the newsletter at honestycommerce.co to get each episode delivered right into your inbox. If you're enjoying this content, consider leaving a review on iTunes that really helps us out. Lastly, if you're a store owner looking for an amazing partner to help you get your Shopify store to the next level, reach out to Electric Eye at electriceye.io. Until next time.